Welcome back. Okay, this is a very interesting game, played by one of my favorite, you know, historical chess players, Frank Marshall, where he has the black pieces against David Janowski, and we start this game from a Petrov's defense. In this position, Marshall played d6, the main line. If you are planning to play the Petrov as black, you should note that knight takes e4 is not so desirable here. There can be an issue on the e-file. Queen e7 is the only sensible move. There will follow queen takes e4. And it's true that d6 will win back the knight. The knight doesn't have a square that he can jump to that defends the queen. However, after d4, d takes e5, d takes e5, white is simply up a pawn. And black actually isn't dead here, but you have to defend accurately to play this position. There's no need for this. You could also try something like knight c6. This would be called the Stafford Gambit. And, uh, I mean, most sane people avoid this position. But if you like Eric Rosen, then maybe this is for you. Okay. Marshall chose d6, the main line. Knight back to f3, knight takes e4, d4, d5, bishop d3, bishop d6, and this is all very standard, this is a very normal way to handle the Petrov. White has this move, c4. The knight is only held by the pawn on d5, so if that pawn ever leaves, the knight will be hanging. Very nice little move, expanding in the center. Marshall played bishop b4 check, and... Here, a very normal looking move to me is knight d2. However, play in this line might continue castles, castles, knight takes d2, knight takes d2, bishop takes d2, bishop takes d2, d takes d4, bishop takes c4, queen takes d4, black has gained a pawn. However, after bishop d4, queen takes c4, bishop takes f8, you can't take the bishop because there would follow queen d8 checkmate. And I showed you that line because... Oh, okay, white is doing fine here. White is a pawn down. However, white has the exchange. The reason I showed you this line is because in the game, king f1 was played. And uh, for a long time, I didn't understand this move. However, eventually I would run into National Master David Sherman at the Minnesota Chess Center in Florida, where I used to work, and uh, he told me that the reason for this move is that Janowski just wanted to keep pieces on the board. He knows that in a position with so much simplification, such as this position with queen takes d4, it's difficult to see bishop f8 and then, you know, queen d8. Probably Janowski just didn't see that. Janowski probably saw something like queen c2. And here, white is still okay. He has the worst side of equality. White is a pawn down, but he does have two bishops. But against someone of, uh, you know, Marshall's caliber, why be a pawn down with this much simplification? This might be very difficult to maintain. So, king f1 was chosen instead. Play continues, castles, c takes d5, queen takes d5, and Janowski plays this nifty move, queen c2. And queen c2, it x-rays the h7 pawn, and it double attacks the knight on e4. And if you're playing like a normal move, like knight f6, defending the knight, or getting out of the way with the knight and defending h7, then after queen takes c7, yes, it does look a little scary. Knight c6 threatens bishop d6. However, there can follow knight c3, and white is doing just fine here. In the game, however, it was rook e8, and this makes quite a bit of a difference. Queen takes c7 is actually pretty bad now. Queen takes c7, knight c6, there is still the threat of bishop d6, and there are also some lines where rook e1 becomes a relevant threat. Knight a3 is suggested by the engine. Uh, however, if you're trying to, like, if you play a normal move, like trying to extract the queen with queen f4, then white actually loses on the spot. 
Knight takes d4. Knight takes d4. Queen takes d4. So the threat is to take the bishop. The d1 square is loose behind the bishop. And f2 is a little bit loose. If bishop e2, pause the video. See if you can find the winning tactic for black. For black. Bishop g4. And this bishop is immune. And we're threatening to take on e2. If you take with the queen, you hang mate. And if you take with the bishop, then a very nice continuation, knight g3. And if f takes, then this is still checkmate because the queen actually holds the f2 square. So, rook e8 is a very nice move. White correctly assesses that c7 is no good. Knight c3 is played instead, good move. And play continued. Knight takes c3. It does hang the h7 pawn, but this is not a very meaningful threat. There's just not a good follow-up. And even if we're taking, this will actually transpose to the game within a few moves. So, not a big problem for white. Sorry, for black. Knight c3, we have knight takes c3. B takes c3 was chosen instead. And pause the video. See if you can find a killer tactic for black. Congratulate yourself if you found queen takes f3, a tactic based on the weird king on f1. The rook cuts off the e-file. So if g takes is played, there will simply be bishop h3 made in 3. Like so. So queen is immune and that knight is free. Play followed. C takes b4. And in this position, knight c6. The threat is bishop h3. The threat is knight takes b4. Knight takes d4. Bishop b2. And at this point, Janowski probably thought that he had parried the back rank threat. However, in this position, Marshall has a very quick win with bishop h3. There's a pin against that pawn, so the queen is actually not hanging anymore. And the only way to defend this is rook to g1. Play might continue knight b4. We're double attacking the bishop, gaining time against the queen. And if bishop e2, then we can simplify down in this manner. There's a pin against the rook. The bishop is loose. The rook on a1 is hit. This is no good for white. However, after bishop takes b2, uh, Marshall didn't see this. He just played knight takes b4, which is still a pretty good move. We have bishop h7 check, king h8. And it's true that we lost a pawn with check, but, you know, what does that matter? Uh, there's not a meaningful follow-up on this, on this bishop takes h7 idea. It does save the bishop. However, Janowski then played g takes f3. Not a very good move. Bishop h3, we follow through on our idea. King g1 is forced. Knight takes c2. Bishop takes c2. And we regain our material with rook e2. A very nice skewer. The bishops are loose. Rook c1 is the only way to hang on to the bishop. However, now we can double the rooks, and the threat, once again, is checkmate on e1. Bishop c3. Well, the idea is that we want to get out of the skewer and then, like, move our bishop somewhere. Marshall had a pretty quick win here. Uh, pause the video, see if you can find it. Congratulate yourself if you found rook takes c2. And if rook takes c2, there is rook e6, and there's no way to stop rook g6 checkmate. You can, of course, like, block it, but no big deal. Marshall didn't see this in the game. He played instead a very nice other move. Rook 8 to e3, going after the other bishop and the f3 pawn. In the game, it was bishop b4, saving the bishop. However, this permits rook takes f3, uh, and the threat is rook e takes f2, and I don't see how you stop mate. Let's see, like, like, let's make a slow move, there's this, and then maybe here, and in this position we just say checkmate on g2. So, pretty good position for black. In the game, bishop d1 is tried, but this of course gives up control of g6. 
we simply slide our bishop back and it will be mate on g6 soon enough. And in this position, white resigned. Very nice game by Marshall.